This is an example of defining a very criti critical strategic concept in the Bible, at the same time addressing what it is not. You tell people what the gospel is, and then you tell them what it isn't. Here's one thing that it isn't. Scripture declares itself that works do not play a part in an individual's salvation. The final authority as to whether works do play a part in an individual's salvation must, however, come from God's word. Remember, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith. That salvation, not of yourselves, gift of God, not by works, lest anyone might boast. Okay, it's telling you what it is, by faith, but it's not by works, not of yourselves, not by works, not of yourselves. It's not what it is, but what it is, it's by faith. I'm saying it's by faith alone, not anything else. So the final authority as to whether works do play a part in an individual's salvation must, however, come from God's word. Romans 4, 1 to 5. We just read Acts, uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, also by the same author, Paul. Romans 4, 1 to 5. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, is found? For if Abraham was justified by works, declared righteous by works. By whom? He has something to boast about. But not before God. Well then who's left? Who do you think is left? Man. So justification unto eternal life before God does not include any kind of works, whether meritorious or not. Some people like to squeeze through that back door, saying, well, you got saved by grace through faith alone. But if you don't do anything, then you really didn't get saved by grace through faith alone. You don't do anything to get saved except believe what God has already done. Because faith is passive. It's not contributory. This verse says that Abraham's works justified him before men, not before God, that he was the saved man, saved unto eternal life. Therefore, God is the one who justifies unto eternal life, not men. And it is by faith alone, as it says in the next verse. What does the scripture say? He's explaining. The, the scriptures already anticipate, well, the objection will be, well, wait a minute. Justified, but not before God. What do you mean? What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. There's the faith, not the works. Abraham believed God, and as a result of his belief, not as a result of anything that he did. It was credited to him as righteousness by God. There by God. And you look at Genesis 15, 6 as the account of that. Verse 4 says, Now to the one who works for salvation unto eternal life. We've got another kind of salvation, the temple salvation. In this case, it's unto eternal life, justification unto eternal life. His wage, what he gets paid, what he's recompensed for, is not reckoned as a favor, but as what is due, thus canceling out the great space of salvation, and you remain under condemnation. Why? Because you're not going to be successful doing works unto eternal life, because what do you have that's within you until this mortal life is over? Your sin nature is going to contaminate everything. It's like poison food. You don't eat the food in your plate, even though some of it's good, because some of it's poison. Throw it all out. <clears throat> Verse 5, but to the one who does not work for salvation unto eternal life. But instead, instead believes in him, in Christ, in God, who justifies the ungodly, his faith without works is reckoned as righteousness. See, other people say, like James says, faith without works is dead. Well, faith without works is dead relative to what? Reward, salvation, temporal salvation, the longevity of your life being lived out, not the years being cut short. It's dead reckoned to the idea that you're not demonstrating what you should be doing, as James chapter 2 begins. 
You should be demonstrating your faith to people by being kind to them, addressing their issues, praying for them, and so on. Compare Titus 3.5 on this issue of what about works. He saved us, <clears throat> not on the basis of deeds, which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy. That's his grace. You didn't deserve it. By the washing of regeneration, washing away of your sins, you get born again and renewing by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit does the work when you believe. So if anything is done by an individual other than God, with the result that salvation unto eternal life is supposed to be received, then those actions are by definition attempts to receive eternal life meritoriously. People say, well, I'm saved by grace after all I can do. Mormons say that. That's in their book, Nephi. Well, the problem with that is, if you're saved by grace, then you can't be saved by grace plus. It's either one or the other. It's by works or it's by grace. The two don't mix. You give somebody a birthday gift, and at the end of the birthday, you say, can I have ten bucks? Why? Oh, I spent ten bucks on your birthday gift. Really? That's not a birthday gift. There are actions which will inevitably fail. The concept of all works toward, toward one's salvation, being meritorious, cannot be changed unless the meanings of words which God has inspired to be used in the Bible can be arbitrarily redefined, which is what people do, contrary to the intention of the Almighty Himself. It's God is going to inspire uh, His Word to be written by human authors in a specific way, and to be taken in a certain way, how do you think it should be taken? According to the dictionary. What does the dictionary do? What, 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 who, what, who's he? Noah Webster. He's the one that reflects how words are used. And the, all the other past dictionaries don't invent the meaning of words. They t report what the words are being used for. Most words have more than one definition. Depends upon the context. So you go back to your grammar book, find out what context means. Let me give you a hint. Who? What? Why? Where? When? How? To whom? Answer that. That's your context. John 6, 27 to 29. The matter that one must do, the work that one must do for eternal life is exclusively a matter of faith, according to John 6, 27 to 29. Jesus had already been saying 26 verses before this what salvation is. Let me just take a look. I'm amazed how people jump right to the verse in John chapter 6 that has some issue that they want to address, ignoring all the other 26 verses before that. So we go to the feeding of the 5,000 by the Sea of the Galilee, of Sea of Galilee, Tiberias. A large cloud, crowd follows him, goes up on the mountain where he can talk. Passover of the, of the, the Jews, the feast was near. Jesus saying, that, where do we buy bread for these to eat? Preparations are made. Okay, now here we go. How do the people sit down when they start arriving? Gathering up the loaves. Only, only uh, a few loaves were there. When they were filled, the whole crowd, thousands were filled. The miracle is intended. Now he's got something to say. They were going to try to make him king, force him to the mountain. So he withdrew again to the high mountain. So the crowd followed him. They themselves got into small boats, came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. Because they wanted to force him to be king, wanted nothing to do with it. They found him on the other side of the sea. They said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Now Jesus said, okay, I've rejected your idea. You're going to make me, force me to be king. Here's what I have to say, and here's what I'm all about. Truly, truly, I say to you, seek, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves of the bread and were filled. I can do miracles. Maybe I can do more. But he says, do not work for the food which perishes, but the, for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for, for on him this, the, on him the Father God has sent his seal. Therefore they said to him, What shall we do 
so that we may do the works of God. He says, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So that's work. No, it isn't. It's a play on words. People go, that's it. That's works faith. Would you read the context, please? He escaped because he was going to do for them what they wanted him to do, is to kick out the Romans and become king and make, give Israel their own uh, auspices and in independence back. That's what, not what he's about. The work of God that you believe in him, he has sent. That's his work. It's no work at all that you believe. He's going to do the work. So they said, Where do we, what then do you do for a sign that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? And he goes on and on and on. For the bread of God. So he says, Well, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. He who believes in me will not never thirst. So what do you do? You come to Jesus. That's your work, right? But he's saying he's defining coming to him as believing. Again, figurative speech. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. That's the whole reason why he came the first time, that you believe in him. Because what is he going to do? Die for the sins of the whole world. Here's another verse, verse 40. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life. And I myself will raise him up on the last day. Twice now. What is the work you must do? It's no work at all. It's believe. He's not asking you to perform or do anything. All he's saying is believe. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. And what he draws him to do what? It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught of God. Everyone who has learned, heard and learned from the Father comes to me. You learn something. Then you come to Jesus. Evidence of believing. Truly, truly, I say to you, verse 47, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down, comes down out of heaven so that you may eat of it and not die. Is that a work? Figurative speech. How many Catholics and how many others think this is, you have to do some work, you have to eat of the bread, that means do some, no. It's figurative speech. He's already said, believe, any number of times. So, go back to our original text. Recall what it says. John 6, 27 to 29. Our Lord explicitly states that the work that one must do for eternal life is exclusively what? A matter of believing, a matter of faith, a matter of trust. Same words. Actually, same Greek word. Different English words to say the same thing. So to obey the Lord, what does he tell you to do? As people go, oh, you have to obey him. What does he ask you to do? Content of what he asks you to do. So to obey the Lord unto eternal salvation must necessarily be to obey his command to what? Trust alone in him alone for eternal life. No deeds required. Figurative speech. John 6, 27, 29. Let's read it again. Jesus answered, do not work for food that spoils, but work, oh, work for food that endures to eternal life. So you have to do some work which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? And what does he say? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Our Lord picks up in the word work, which the disciples were mindful of, but he used it not in a literal sense, but in a figurative one. I like the word in there. Emphatic in a figurative sense, figurative one, and provided the answer, which is no work at all, but to simply believe in Jesus Christ as Savior, the one God has sent. Faith alone in Christ alone. Just as a father can answer his precious, precocious young son's question in using drive in a non-literal fashion as follows, the verb drive, which car can I drive to class, Dad? The son asks. I'll tell you which car you can drive, the father says. You can drive the school bus to class. 
So our Lord uses the word work in a non-literal fashion in the same way. 